Hello people, welcome to this video. Let's see quickly how to use Sony Movie Studio Platinum 13. Check the Smart Index in video description to watch just where you need hints. If you don't know, Movie Studio 13 is a video editing software, something you can use to create video projects and even snapshots. When you open the software, a welcome window appears to open fast a new project file. Close it at the moment. First of all, you have two kinds of workspaces shown in the top left corner, simple and advanced. We will see here just the advanced one since it is the most complete one and allows you to have a major control on your own project. This workspace is well defined. On top you have different buttons to make basic operations, for example to save, load or render your project. A little below all the windows opened. These have different functions and behaviors and you can open and close them freely. For example, if you close the master buzz, you can open it again, going to view, window and then clicking on the window just closed. You can organize your space, dragging their contours, just in case you are in distress at seeing something. More at the bottom, you have the main timeline. This is used to work on each single clip inside your project. Plus, you have other buttons more below. Let's start creating a new project. Simply click on New Project on top. In the following window, set your best template, the frame rate, the resolution and so on. Choose the destination folder below. When you click on OK, it will be created and saved in such folder. Movie Studio projects are saved as .vf and can be opened just with this software. Saving this, you can open your project again anytime to modify it. Your main timeline will be initially vacant and is composed by different tracks, one for each row. There are two kinds of tracks, the video tracks that welcome video frames, pictures and text, and the audio tracks that welcome anything that is not visible, such as soundtracks, music and speech. So text, videos, images and sound are the four main kinds of files with which a project is made and each one of them is called the clip. To add the clips you just need to drag on the tracks your files from your desktop or any of your folders directly. If you want to add more files all at once select them on and on while holding control down and then drag and drop all. Save often your video project while working on it. Just press Ctrl and S with your keyboard or click on save above. When you notice an asterisk next to the project name it means that you haven't saved yet. While working on your project it is fundamental the preview window. On your timeline there is the playhead that you can drag on the left and right in time. The preview shows how your project is coming up at the instant of time where the playhead is. So moving the playhead means seeing how your project is in the preview. You can choose to see the project in real time using the player buttons. Watch it in full screen mode clicking on the screen icon. Mind that 
if the preview quality is too high, your computer may not show all properly. You can set it clicking on the preview quality button. Then, through project video properties, you can change the frame rate and the aspect ratio of your whole project in progress anytime. Let's see how to edit your project. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out around the playhead. Zoom in to see better how each clip is. Video picture clips show how they are time by time, while sound clips show their waveform. If you have two waveforms, it means that the soundtrack is stereo with two channels, the right one and the left one. You can edit your files in the same way. The clip can be text, a video or an image, but the way to edit and manage it is identical. Click and drag a clip to move it along a track or in another track. Remember that the clips placed on an higher track in position are the ones shown above all clips placed in lower tracks. Remember it to show clips above others. Drag the lateral edges to stretch or shorten the clip. With images and text, there is no problem at doing this. But you have if you work with videos and sound clips. These, in fact, do have a beginning and an end. So if you stretch them over their duration, they will be simply looped from the start. This happens if you work on normal mode below. If you change to fade mode and approach the same edges, you will apply a fade in or a fade out. In visible clips, this means to make the clip appear and disappear. In audio ones, to increase or decrease the audio volume. A fade between two clips appears, if you approach them enough. To learn how to create transitions between clips, Watch the related video in this guide. If you approach the edge on top in any mode, you will decrease the opacity level, so that, if you have any clip below, this will become fully or partially visible. Just pull up or down the line. Hold CTRL down to set the percentage more carefully. If you do the same on sound clips, you will decrease their volume, measured in decibels or dB. You can cut, copy and paste a selected clip right-clicking on it. You can cut it to delete it fast, also using CTRL and X. Very important is the loop region. When the playhead goes inside, such part is played on and on if loop playback is active. Indeed, you can use it to cut parts of clips. Select the clips to cut and then click and hold down on the part you want to cut. If you right click on such region and go to cut, just such part will disappear. Whereas, to split a clip in two, place the playhead correctly and press the S letter from your keyboard. This acts on the clips selected at the moment. Very useful is the time stretch. Approach the lateral edges and hold CTRL down. In this way you will trim the clip, which means changing the playing speed of such clip. If you stretch, you will slow it down. If you make it shorter, you will increase its speed. Notice that audio clips stretched too much may not sound properly. 
If the clip is shown big enough, you may notice one or two buttons on it. If you want to know how to use these to edit clips more, watch the related video in this guide. You can move and edit more clips at the same time. Simply select more of them, clicking on them while holding Ctrl down and then act. If you ever mistake, you can use the undo and redo buttons on top. These can undo the latest action or make it applied again. Video clips with sound are the only ones that occupy both video and audio tracks. Frames and audio will always be moved, cut and split together. You can unlink them pressing U letter from your keyboard while the video clip is selected. If frames and original sound are shifted, they will be colored in red. Let's see the tracks. Each track has a characteristic color, a number indicating the position and a frame icon in video tracks and a loudspeaker icon in audio tracks. Double click on the box on the right and type in to set the track name. You can enlarge or shrink the track sides dragging its contours. The higher is such track the better its clips are shown in detail. Depending on the kind of track, you have different buttons that affect all the clips inside such track. We won't see all buttons here. Check the effects tutorial for more about them. For example, the mute button disables the whole track, so a video track won't be visible anymore or an audio track can't be heard at all. Click again on the button to make all work. The solo button deactivates all tracks except the one interested to focus attention just on it. Audio tracks also have a volume bar on the left and a panning bar on the right. The volume bar affects the wall clips on such track. Amplify it above 0 decibels if sound is low, or decrease it below 0 dB, vice versa. To check audio levels, just have a look at the master buzz. If number starts being read, turn down the volume or you risk distortion. Panning is used to distribute the volume of the whole track between the two stereo channels. Last step is to render. To export your video, just go to Make Movie. You can choose to upload it on the net, burn it to a disk, or simply save it as a video file in your computer. The process is fully guided and very easy. Just keep in mind that the render video will be your full project until the last frame in time. To render just a part of the project or to control it better, create a loop region that contains the parts interested and then, while setting the render options, check render loop region only. Thanks for watching! Check out how to put text, HD quality and effects going on through this guide.